So we are doing a series on security and today we are focusing on the end user and the end user workstations. We've touched on server, we've touched on network. Today we're gonna to go to the users themselves and see what security recommendations that we could be putting in place to improve on your security footprint. Hey, my name is Emilio and I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. The end user computers and the end users themselves, you need to be putting things in place around their security, putting the right practices to improve on the security hardening of their systems and the education of your staff themselves. The scary statistic is that up to 40% of data breaches, data leakage and malicious content coming into a network is that it's triggered primarily from the end user. The end user doing something they shouldn't have, doing things by mistake, and sometimes even intentional. So putting the right systems and procedures in place around your end user computers and making sure that they know what they're doing from a security perspective to make sure that your system is secure is imperative. Workstations and computers need to be bound to Active Directory, to AD. So you need to have an Active Directory system in place first on a server side to be able to get your computers talking to AD. Essentially, AD is going to let you control and manage all of your workstations from one centralized location. You can then push out policies and procedures out to all of your fleet of computers around security hardening, looking at you know, setting up passwords, locking screensavers, um, and, and a number of other things to be able to manage it all from one centralized location through Active Directory is imperative. Computers should not be running standalone unless they are centrally managed from one single location through AD. User passwords need to be set to expire. There's no good reason why user's passwords should be set to never expire. This is a huge security risk and a security concern. Implementing something like a 60 or a 90 day reset policy across your passwords is imperative. This can be done through a system such as group policy by Active Directory. Along with password expiration is making sure that those passwords are complex. So putting in complex procedures on those passwords that they have to be a certain character length, that they have to be both uppercase and lowercase, they have to contain a number and they have to contain a special character. Having those in place are uh, the elementary component to making sure that the passwords are secure, making sure that passwords are not reused, making sure that passwords are not easy, so they're not simple dictionary, um, you know, simple words. So putting these things in place along with password expiration ensures that your passwords are more secure. Look at setting a five minute lockout policy on a computer. So this is done generally via a screensaver that automatically locks the computer after five minutes or that they have, you know, a user has to put in their password to be able to get in. You don't want computers out on the floor to be open. Anybody can just go in snoop and access the computer without any, you know, without any issue. So put in a five minute lockout policy against every workstation. Removing staff as local administrators is uh, something that is easily overlooked, but something that is very, very important. If a user is a local administrator, they have full access to their system. They can go and change registry settings, they can go and install any sort of software, including malicious software, unintentionally, from the internet. Removing that privilege can, gives you more control. Users should be able to access their computer and do what they need to do to, have their, to, you know, to do their work, to do their day-to-day -day job, but shouldn't have full administrative access to their own computer. As soon as a staff member leaves an organization and they're terminated, get their account disabled straight away. Not just their Active Directory account, but every account that they've got, disable it straight away. You don't want staff that have now left the business to still have active accounts within your business. Implement regular security patching across all of the computers on your network. You know, companies such as Microsoft and Apple, they will release patches regularly, generally on a monthly by month basis, that are security fixes, patches, for vulnerabilities that have been discovered on the operating systems and on the software. So getting systems in place to make sure that patches are pushed out at least every you know, month, every two, every three, every six months, whatever it may be, regularly enough to make sure that your systems are secure and free from risk of any security vulnerabilities. Look at encrypting the hard drives within your computers. Now, this is something that a lot of people overlook sometimes, but 
if a computer is lost or stolen, the hard drive inside the computer can still be opened up, can be taken out, plugged into a USB hard drive or a USB case, and plugged into a USB drive, and then they've got access to that full computer's hard drive. They can see the file structure, they can access the files and folders quite easily. Of course, you can have a password on your computer. If your computer gets stolen, somebody powers on your computer and they're prompted for a password, that's not secure enough. They still can access it by taking the hard drive out and still see the files unless it is encrypted. If it's encrypted, then they cannot do that. Look at disabling the guest account on workstations. There's no good reason this account is even enabled. Enabling this lets people just be able to go in and log into the computer and just poke around. So disable the guest account unless, unless, unless it's needed because it has maybe it's a shared computer or it's used by customers or guests who do come in. Otherwise, disable that account. Limit control or block USB drive access on USB ports on computers. This is something that can be overlooked quite easily, but it's, it's important as well. Um, you don't want people, guests, customers, contractors, anybody in your network to be able to go in and just plug in any device into a, into a USB port. Doing that can introduce malicious software onto your computer, can also install software onto a computer to be able to scan the network and get information and steal data off a network. Uh, this is the same with your staff. Do you want your staff to be able to plug in their own personal device and take data out? This is security breaches. So look at controlling uh, the access to USB ports on those computers. If you do need them for um, you know, USB keyboards and mice, that can still be enabled, but you just disable access from a USB drive. Look at limiting or controlling BYO devices. Bring your own devices. These are devices that staff can bring themselves from their home, whether it would be a laptop, a, another sort of computer or even a phone. This is something that is their own personal computer bringing, coming in and bringing anything into your network. You don't know what's on those computers. You don't know what they could be introducing into your network. If they have some malicious software, if they have a virus on their computer, they plug into your network, it could spread through your whole network. There are systems in place to control that, uh, to put good practices in place around device management of BYO devices. Uh, if you don't want to look at going down that route, then perhaps look at banning those devices altogether and, have, and having company data, company inf infrastructure and company computers only. Put a good practice in place to not store business data on the end user computers. Have systems in place that they can store data on servers and work directly off a server, whether that be a personal home drive, like an H drive, or directly on other servers, on other shares, but don't store data locally on your computer unless you really need to. Unless you have backup systems in place to back up the data off the computer to a server, there's no need to have data residing on the computer. The computer is a tool to be able to access servers and shares and drives and work directly off those because those systems are backed up, those systems are secure. Get endpoint protection installed on every single computer. This is gonna protect you from viruses, from spyware, uh, any other sort of malicious software that may be installed onto a computer. Getting this software installed, controlled across all of your fleet is imperative. Furthermore, ensuring that this software, that these endpoint protection software is regularly updated. It's got the latest definitions being downloaded automatically, however long they, you know, however often they get released, making sure that the scans are done regularly as well, that perhaps every night a scan is done, making sure that the scans are done across every file that is open, any file that is added to the computer and opened up, it scans it before it actually does open it up. Look at enforcing two-factor authentication across certain systems and certain services. So this is if somebody wants to access a particular system, they're prompted to use two different types of um, credentials to be able to access that computer. Sometimes using just one single password is not enough. If that password is compromised, and somebody has full access into this particular system. So you can put a second factor of authentication to be able to access the system, such as a pin code being sent to a phone, such as using an authenticated application on your phone that gives you a code, or even like a token. Something like this to be able to access your system requires a password and also a second form factor authentication or a code or something similar. Look at retiring legacy end of life operating systems and software. This is software that no longer is supported, 
vendors such as Microsoft and Apple, for example, will not release updates for software that is no longer supported, so software that is now end of life and is legacy. That puts the business at risk. So make sure that any earlier versions of operating systems, such as Windows XP, is no longer in use because it can no longer be patched. Get everything upgraded or replaced to a newer version of an operating system and any newer, any older software is upgraded to newer versions of software. Across all of your hardware and infrastructure, get some sort of a legal notice to be displayed on the screen before somebody logs in. This could be your end user computers, this could be your servers, this could be you accessing a switch. As soon as somebody logs in, or at least turns it on, they're prompted with a security warning that says, you know, by using this system, you are agreeing to our acceptable use policy. Any breach of this will have X, Y consequences. Get that in place so that anybody who accesses any system, any infrastructure piece of system in your organization is well aware of the risk so that if they do breach any IT accessible use policy, they should have known better. Many security breaches are actually initiated from your staff themselves. Staff education is imperative. Whether this is staff trained internally, whether they're sent off-site, whether if it's communicated by emails or internal meetings, get your staff trained up and aware of security concerns out in the IT and out in the business industries. So that was our end user and workstation security recommendations. A lot of stuff in there. This will essentially form a good foundation for you. Next time we are doing our final video on our security series, focusing on all the bits that we've missed out. We're gonna be talking about email security, we're talking about hardware and infrastructure security, and also some final process and documentation that you should be putting in place to improve on your security footprint. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel, Digital by Computing, just on the button there for more videos.